Let us pray. Dear Father God, we do thank you that we can come to celebrate the birth of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus. Help us to hear what you have to say to us through your word. Amen. Amen. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the Lord, the law of the Lord, every firstborn is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him into his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Peniel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Israel, of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks so much, Francis. Love it if you'd uh, keep that little passage open from Luke. And well done, children, for uh, listening to such a long reading there. And uh, children, growing up to our subject this morning, I think, is... Um, Waiting. That is what our Christmas reading is all about this morning. Did you notice loads of people in our passage this morning waiting, 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 waiting for something really big and really significant to happen. Now, children, I thought we would just start with a quick experiment to see how good you are at waiting for something. Anyone want to be a volunteer this morning? Any, anyone want to come and volunteer? Is that a hand, Jukanji, around there? Oh no, it's a Ruth or a Dora. Go on, you come up. Come up, now. Fantastic. Here we go. Here's a little experiment. Let's see how good we are at waiting for things. I have to say my children are not, not very good at waiting if last night's uh, amount of sleep was anything to go by. But here we go. Who's good at waiting for things? Now, um, here's the question, okay. Would you like... And listen carefully. Would you like to receive one of these Christmas chocolates right now? You can eat it right now, no waiting at all. Or wait a whole year, okay? A whole year. Can you wait a whole year? And I promise I'll give you one of those. You can have that now. 
subject to dietary requirements, mum and dad. <laughs> have that now. Or wait a whole year. What do you think you'll do? Have that now. Interesting, interesting. Well done. Let's have a round of applause. Thank you very much. You go and sit back down. Interesting. Now, um, have a look down at that passage. Just check out the emphasis on waiting, everyone. Have a look, for example. Can you see verse 25 there? Sentence 25. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. And he was what? Can you see that there, folks? He was waiting for the, isn't this an interesting phrase, for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. So uh, children, let me tell you about um, Simeon. So Simeon was probably a very, very old man. Um, It says here that he was righteous, which doesn't mean that he was perfect. It just means that he trusted the Lord. But the thing to know about Simeon is that he was very, very, very good at waiting. Okay, much better at waiting than our volunteer a moment ago. But the thing that Simeon was waiting for was something much bigger than chocolate. The thing that he was waiting for was the consolation of Israel. Can you see that? So, um, children, Israel uh, was a country. England is a country. We live in England. He lived in Israel. And if you'd have gone to school at the time of Simeon, your history lessons would have been full of amazing stories of uh, heroes and victories and conquests. It was an amazing history. It was a complete uh, golden age. Israel's history, the envy of the world. But can you believe it? What happened at the high point of their history was that as a nation, they did this and they, they turned their backs on God and they rejected him and they ignored him and they went from being very big and very great and very powerful to very small and very weak and very feeble and lots of nations came along with their armies, devastated the land and took the people away from their homes and that is the situation really in the time of Simeon. They are still a conquered people under Roman rule. And so here is old man Simeon, and he is waiting for the consolation of Israel. A day when Israel would be made great again, and the national fortunes would be reversed. But can you see, folks, if you look at the next sentence, sentence 26, for Simeon, this wait is not just about his country. Can you see it's also about him? It's also really personal because the Lord had made a special promise to him that he would not die until the day when he would see the special one, the rescuer, the redeemer, the one who would come and sort out Israel's fortunes. And he is not the only person waiting this morning. Have a look at the end of sentence 38. Can you see there's a whole load of people there waiting, waiting, waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem, the rescue of Jerusalem. So can you see lots of waiting going on this morning? Some serious waiting. So children, how easy did you find it waiting for Christmas um, this year? Hands up anybody who found it so hard to sleep last night because they were just waiting for Christmas. Some hands up at the back. Livy, you can definitely have your hands up. Um, Brilliant. Hands up anybody who woke up really early this morning because they couldn't wait to open their presents. Rob Hindmarsh, what time were you up, Rob? 530. 5.30. I hope it was um, worth the wait. Well, Simeon here, he's not just waiting for Christmas. He's waiting for the first ever Christmas. It's hard enough, isn't it, kids? Waiting for Christmas, let alone waiting for the first Christmas. So, Simeon, let's, um, let's just ask you a few questions. So, Simeon, tell us, um, just tell us again, why, why, are you wa- why are you waiting, Simeon? Tell us again. I'm waiting for a rescuer to come and rescue my country, and God has said to me that before I die, I will see the rescuer. You must have been waiting for a long time, Simeon. Um, as long as I can remember. You must be really good at waiting. I suppose I am. And uh, what are you doing today, Simeon? What's going on today? 
um, it tells you in verse 27, I thought I'd come to the temple today. I don't know why. I just had a feeling that something big might happen today. Interesting. Well, thanks, Simeon. We'll, we'll meet Simeon a little bit uh, later. But grown-ups, just I want to ask you a quick question from sentence 29 there. What, what would need to happen for you to be able to say verse 29 in your life? Just have a look at it. What would need to happen for you to say sentence 29? Okay, now I can die happy. Yeah, now, now you can dismiss your servant in, in peace. I've, I've done everything I want to do in my life. I've seen everything I want to see in my life. Now I can die happy. What, what would it take for you to say, yeah, now I can die happy? I googled that question this week. Here is the recommendations according to one website of things you need to do before you can say, now I can die happy. Apparently you need to swim with dolphins, you need to go on safari, you need to see the Grand Canyon, go in a hot air balloon and see the northern lights. I think I'm on one out of five, okay, so not doing particularly well. But I asked the question because what would it take for Simeon here to say, verse 29, yeah, I've seen it, I've done it. Now I can die happy. Well, here's old man Simeon in the temple. Still waiting, Simeon? Yeah, still waiting. Still waiting. But look, look, here's Mary and Joseph. They've come to the temple today to dedicate their little boy. He must be, I guess, about six weeks old or something. They've come to dedicate the boy. Here's Simeon, old man Simeon, never met before, complete strangers. Let's, let's watch, shall we, what happens when Mary and Joseph come to the temple. Seven, everyone, verse 27, moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms, praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you've promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. Now I can die happy. The wait is over. The rescuer that I've been looking forward to my whole life. Finally here, the promised one. The wait is over. Now I can die happy. We need to find out a bit more about this. What makes this child so special? Uh, we've thought a little bit about uh, waiting. Now, really briefly, just as we finish, what were they all waiting for? Now, children, I've got a bit of a kind of rescue quiz for you going on in a second. We'll do that in a moment. But grown-ups, just while I'm doing that with the kids, I've just put something on the service sheet there just for you, just to show you really and to try and persuade you that Luke, our writer, the thing that he wants to teach us this morning... Our theologian, our teacher Luke, he wants to teach us that this baby is all about rescue. Maybe you want to just chase that up as we do this with the kids. So kids, here's the, uh, the question. I'm going to give you a few different scenarios, a few rescue situations. Tell me the kind of rescuer you need, okay? So we're stuck up on a mountain. Do you want a mountain rescue guy to help you or do you want the lollipop lady? Hands up for the lollipop lady. Brilliant. A lot of love for lollipop ladies. I like that a lot. Um, you're not feeling very well. You need someone to rescue you. Do you want the doctor? Hands up. Or do you want a footballer? Will your love of Tottenham goes far too far? Um, and then final one. Hopefully we're getting in the swing of it now. Another rescue situation. I'm at sea. I'm in trouble. Do you want a lifeguard or do you want the ice cream man? The ice cream man, Darina. There's a lot of too much love for the, uh, the ice cream. Now, grown-ups, are you persuaded? Are you persuaded that Luke is lining up the clues to show us that the whole point of this baby is okay, rescue? And in particular, did you notice rescue by sacrifice? Because as Mary and Joseph came into the temple, did you notice they weren't just clutching the buggy, but in their hands, what are they holding? A sacrifice? 
And check out those words that Simeon says to Mary at the end of verse 35. Um, I don't know if you've been to a baby shower before. Uh, Have you ever heard anyone say at a baby shower, a sword will pierce your own soul? Have you heard those words at a baby shower before? Referring, of course, to what is going to happen when Jesus dies on the cross as a sacrifice in our place. Can Can you see the point? Luke wants us to get this morning, what is Christmas all about? What's the whole point of Christmas? What are we celebrating? You sit down for Christmas lunch today, what are you celebrating? The birth of a sacrifice. That is why he's born in a cattle trough. That is why he is born in a stable. The whole point of his life, he's going to die in our place to bring the rescue we need. And notice, would you, not just a sacrifice for Israel, but did you see that verse 32 for the Gentiles as well? Which is Luke's way of saying everybody, because of course it turns out that it's not just Israel that did this, but all of us have done this. All of us have lived as if God doesn't exist and ignored him in our lives. And so what happened to Israel? Do you remember when they went from being a very big and powerful nation to very small and very weak? Well, that is just a Bible picture for actually what will happen to all of us one day when we meet God in judgment, humbled and brought low, which makes Jesus Christ quite a Christmas present, doesn't it? No wonder everybody's so happy. No wonder everybody's been waiting so long. No wonder Simeon can say, now I can die happy. The wait is over. No wonder this lady Anna wants to tell everybody at the end of verse 38 who will listen about the baby. Here is the one who comes to sacrifice his life to bring the rescue we all need. The wait is over. Now I can die happy. Happy Christmas. It really is. Let me pray. Let me pray. Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. Father, we we pray that we might be able to echo these words of Simeon's this morning. That having seen the coming of the rescuer and his sacrifice, all of us might be able to say, actually, yes. Now I can die happy. The wait is over. Happy Christmas. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.